Hello, second graders. Today we are going to learn about the water cycle. Mrs. Bass loves learning about the weather. I like to go outside and look at the clouds and try to predict what the weather is going to be. So I am so excited to teach you about the weather, about storms. So I'm sure that you've already heard what a meteorologist is. A meteorologist is somebody who studies the weather and patterns in weather, and they make a forecast. A forecast is an educated guess based on their models about what the weather is going to be like. They give us a forecast for the week so we know what the weather might look like. That helps us know how to dress for school, especially in spring. That's really important because some days are chilly and some days are warm. And so we want to come to school with the right clothes on for recess, of course. So we are going to read this awesome book today about the water cycle, and it features one of my favorite animals, an elephant, an amazing journey. It's a hot day at the zoo. To cool off, a large elephant uses its trunk to suck up water from a pool. The animal sprays water all over its body. Some of the water falls to the ground and makes a big puddle. The water won't be there for long, though. The water is about to go on an amazing journey. What do you think will happen to the puddle? Water is a liquid. It can flow and take the shape of whatever it is in. That shape might be a bottle, a pond, or even an elephant's trunk. We learned that in our matter unit. Let's go on and see what is going to happen to this puddle. See if your prediction's right. Disappearing water. As the sun shines, the puddle at the zoo gets smaller. Soon all the water is gone. Or is it? You can't see the water anymore, but it's still around. The sun's warmth has changed the, it into a gas called water vapor. Once the water turns into vapor, it floats from the puddle into the air. So you can see here that the elephant had a puddle and then it disappeared. This might happen to you on a rainy day. And it's sunny outside, it rains and there's a puddle in your yard, and then all of a sudden you don't see it anymore. Well, it's not really gone. That water turns into water vapor, which is a gas. On a warm day, pour a cup of water onto the pavement and quickly outline it with chalk. So this is a cool experiment to do on a warm day. Check the puddle every 10 minutes and draw a new outline around it. What do you see happening? Liquid water changing into water vapor is called evaporation. So when this water starts to disappear or turn into water vapor, we call that evaporation. It evaporates. Soon, the water vapor from the elephant's puddle has floated thousands of feet above the earth. Up and up, it rises one mile, then two miles. It passes a jumbo jet. High in the sky, the earth is colder than on earth. As a result, the water vapor gets cooler as it rises higher and higher. When the water vapor cools down, it changes back into tiny water droplets. So when water vapor changes into a liquid, it's called condensation. What do you think might happen to the water droplets now? So we have these water droplets and they're inside of a cloud. And this part of the water cycle is condensation. High in the sky, tiny water droplets gather together around bits of dust. They spread throughout the air and join up with other droplets. When billions of water droplets join together in this way, they make a cloud. The water that the elephant sprayed from its trunk is now drifting miles above the earth as part of some white cloud. So here is a close up a view of a water droplet. And then here you have a cloud. So the clouds start to get bigger and bigger and bigger as they get more drops of water that are connecting to each other. What do you think it might happen when the cloud gets too heavy? Hmm. Clouds may just be one mile above the or earth or as high as eight miles. And the clouds can tell us something about the weather. These clouds here are called cumulus clouds and they let us know that it's going to be a nice day outside. Inside the clouds, the tiny water droplets stick together to form raindrops. It can take a million tiny droplets to make just one raindrop. The wind blows the cloud across the sky. 
Now the weather from the elephant's puddle is spread out high above earth and many miles from the zoo. So inside of a cloud, we can have a raindrop or it could come down as a snowflake, depending on the temperature of the atmosphere. If the air around the cloud is very cold, the water droplets freeze. They become tiny bits of ice that stick together and make snowflakes. So this picture shows tiny drop water droplets joining together to make one raindrop. So those are the droplets and they form one raindrop. So this takes some time. Back down to earth. More droplets join the cloud and each raindrop gets bigger and heavier and soon the raindrops get too heavy to float in the air and they fall back down to earth. The raindrops splash down into the ocean. Just a few days ago, some water drops were inside an elephant's trunk, and now they're part of an ocean wave. Nearly three quarters of Earth is covered by the ocean. As a result, a large amount of rain and snow that fall onto Earth lands in the ocean. And they take up so much of our... From a puddle to the ocean. Some of the water that the elephant sprayed has moved from a puddle to a cloud to the ocean. The movement of water is called the water cycle. Now that water is back on Earth, it may someday go through the water cycle all over again. A cycle is something that happens over and over and over. The water that landed in the, the ocean might go through the water cycle again within a few days. It might stay in the ocean for hundreds or even thousands of years. So we're going to review over here what happens with our water cycle. So right here, first, we have this puddle that the elephants were playing in. And it got really warm outside, and so the sun started to change the water into water vapor. The water vapor floats up into the sky, and we call that evaporation. So the water vapor goes up, and that is evaporation. When the water vapor cools down, it changes into water droplets and forms a cloud. And the droplets condense together. So they condense together and they form raindrops. And when those droplets get too heavy, they fall down as precipitation. And tomorrow we'll learn about different types of precipitation. So first we go up. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation. We'll sing a little song about that next. All over Earth, water is moving through different stages of the water cycle again and again. Water from puddles, rivers, the ocean, and other bodies of water change into water vapor. Evaporation. The vapor changes back into water and forms clouds for condensation. And then falls down to the Earth as rain or snow as precipitation. The water might land in an ocean, in a lake, on a mountaintop, or in your garden. A few droplets might even rain down on a zoo and splash into an elephant's puddle. When it rains, some water falls onto the land and ends up underground. The ground soaks up the water like a giant sponge, and we call that groundwater. So here we have water vapor rising to form clouds. So it is evaporating, and then it's going to condense. We have rain falling down, and that's our precipitation, and more precipitation. And then snow over here, and that's more precipitation. And then we've got water vapor rising to form clouds, so that's evaporation. And more water rising. So see all the different places that the water could turn into water vapor and evaporate? Around and around. All the water on Earth has been here since the planet first formed. For billions of years, Earth's water has been going around and around the water cycle. The water that the elephant sprayed may have moved through the water cycle many, many times before. This time it moved from the puddle to the cloud to the ocean. Where will it go next? Look for a cloud in the sky. Use your imagination to say where the water and the cloud might have come from. Then tell a story of what might happen next to it. So if you want to write a story about a rain droplet coming from a cloud where it lands and what happens to it, Go ahead and be creative. Hey, the water that sprayed, that the elephant sprayed, may have once been in a lake where a dinosaur swam. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. 
Are you ready to sing a song with me to help us remember the water cycle? This is sang to the tune of She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain. You might have heard the song. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Toot, toot. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Toot, toot. Have you heard that song before? Well, that's the rhythm we're going to do. So we're going to sing it and the words are right there. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. It goes up as evaporation forms clouds as condensation. Then it comes down as precipitation. Yes, it does. Yeehaw! You want to do it again? Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. It goes up as evaporation forms clouds as condensation, then comes down as precipitation. Yes, it does. Yeehaw! Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Water travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. It goes up as evaporation forms clouds as condensation, then comes down as precipitation. Yes, it does. Yeehaw! I hope you enjoyed the song and you learned a lot about the water cycle today.